for many in the United States and Canada, it's much more convenient. It, it feels better to deny that Satanism is rampant in America and Canada. It feels better to deny that we have young people by the millions now captivated in something that can make killers out of them. And yet, my friend, right now, there are over 12 million teenagers and younger children who are now involved in the occult in one way or another. And denying it isn't going to make any difference. See, whether you believe in occultism, whether you believe that Satan has power, whether you believe that Satan can, can give you the things that he's promised in these kids, that's immaterial, my friend, because they believe it. Satan is glorious, Satan is great, Jesus sucks, whatever. You know, oh, you all are crazy, you are terrible, what are you all thinking there in Oklahoma? I'm going to pray to God that you all die in an accident. And then his closing salvo was, was words we can't say on camera. I mean, it was basically bleep you bleep holes in all shouty caps and exclamation points. He wishes to uh, unlock uh, the gates of this prison to uh, release the devil from hell uh, and thereby destroy the cosmos. A Christian is a sheep, he's a fucking weak, minded moron who is enslaved and does what he's told to do. They like so much, I don't know. I don't fucking like you. Yeah, I play DD. I like being a dungeon master. And as I interrogated it, it finally admitted it was, it was there by a curse. I said, where'd the curse come from? And it said, a witch. And just went, <laughs> As has already been reported in our local newspapers, on the internet and on the evening news, a satanic black mass has been scheduled for September 21st in Oklahoma City's Civic Center. Well, I can make it completely convoluted or I can just say it like it is. I worship myself. I view myself as Satan. I'm not the only Satan. Satan is a title. It's not like every night I go home and light black candles and then, you know, bow down before some deity. I mean, that's not what it is at all. It's more of a, a way of life the way that I carry myself. You have to know yourself, you have to be comfortable with the animal that you are, the beast that you are, and know that you're going to do things that other people consider amoral or immoral. But as long as you're gratified in the end and you don't feel guilty because of it, why should you stop? The best way that I can think of to put it is it's a, a veneration of the free will. Uh, everybody's got free will, it's a great gift, it's the most holy of gifts. If you denigrate somebody else's free will, you denigrate your own. Exercising your own free will without uh, impeding the free will of others. I would say that's what Satanism is, in a sense. Where I don't know if that was a sentence. It was kind of a run on sentence. My studies have led me to the origins of the devil, which is Angra Menu. And he comes from Zoroastrianism, which is the first dualistic religion in the world meaning there is one good versus one evil. Everything else before them was polytheistic. Uh, this was history's first monotheism, first moral dualism promoting good versus evil, first uh, religion to believe in a devil, uh, an end of time and a final judgment. And he was originally called the angry spirit, the destructive spirit. That's what Angra Venu stands for. Does it bother you that he is the face versus Satanism in Oklahoma right now? Yeah, yeah, of course it bothers me, because he's the absolute worst person for it. He's worshipping uh, something um, other than himself, and to worship something other than yourself is an insult. Hmm. My name is Adam Daniels. I am the Daster. The Dachma of Angra Menu, Daster, is a Zoroastrian term for high priest. I have the ugliest, dirtiest marks on my record that can be found in this society, and yet, I still walk my path. I am still a warrior. I still go after my goals. I let nothing hold me back. After we kicked him out, he was silent for about a year, and then he came back as he was a Satanist associated with some groups in New York and Boston area. Um, he eventually had a falling out with them. Okay, we are a completely separate entity from Satanism, Paganism, Wicca, any of it. You name it, we're completely different. Do you consider him to be a Satanist? No. Of course he's not. He's a sex offender. 
and now it's the angry Magyu or whatever he says, he worships an angry spirit. Um, as far as I'm concerned, he has nothing to do with Satanism. What makes us different is obviously we're taking on the moniker of worshiping the devil. And the major difference is, is we see the devil as equal to, if not more powerful, than Ahura Mazda, a.k.a. Jehovah, Yahweh, and so forth. Uh, they're devil worshippers, and uh, they're uh, an apocalyptic movement, so they uh, seek to uh, promote the end of creation. As the Nazis try to destroy all the Jews, I believe that we should allow the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims to destroy themselves when it comes to pity. They want to use Satanists, no. I don't want to be a part, I don't want to be considered anything to do with Satanists. I don't care if they're theistic, atheistic, no, I don't want anything to do with it. Because their concept and how they do things, as far as I'm concerned, lack integrity and lack honor. But since we received our first death threat with guns from our own camp, I thought I'd allow my own camp to see what could possibly be done with melee weapons, as everybody knows I embarked from having a plan. This church, in many ways, is founded on a warrior-type basis that has honor and integrity. We do things in the light, we will stand up to our enemies, and we will get in their face and fight them face to face. Congratulations! Tom, you have received the biggest douchebag of the Universe Award, presented by the Church of Armin. And if motherfuckers keep running their mouths, you can earn this great award, too! I am Abay Kelsey Daniels. I am Adam's wife and um, co-founder of this church. So, if you want to pick on someone, here I am. Come fucking pick on me. James Hale, I'm the Lord High Master of the Church of the Four Crown Princes. In the name of Satan, ruler of the earth, king of the world, I command the infernal legions to bestow their unholy power upon me. As long as your beliefs are grounded in Satanism, then we accept membership from you. I'm Sarah Chase, I am the infernal high mistress. I um, manage, I guess, the female side of the church, you should say. Um, could say. I'm Dr. George J. Sig. I'm an adjunct professor at the University of New Mexico. I'm a historian of religion specializing in esotericism and uh, focusing now on new religious movements and minority religious movements. At least with the term new religious movement, we're trying to say, we're taking you seriously, new alternative, slightly, you know, unusual religion. We're trying to approach you from a neutral ground and understand what you're about. As far as Satanism, it's separate from magic, it's a way of life, it's a way of thinking, it's a set of philosophies that have been identified as Satanism, uh, which LaVey did. If you believe in those philosophies, you're a Satanist. If you don't believe in those philosophies, then you're not a Satanist. This is Satanism, actually. The, the acceptance without tolerance, as, as Anton said, is just a natural acceptance of people as they really are. And when you come right down to the essence of Satanism, isn't this really what Satanism is? It's the only normal it, it, We're not right. patronizing. It, that's right. Not it's, an, it's not tolerant. Actually, we're it is, normal. It's knowledge and acceptance of people as they really are. It's reality. It's practicality. Basically, you just be whatever you want, you know? And uh, as long as you're not inflicting upon the free will of others, then you're good. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's normal life, no. Um, when I first came to the church, uh, I had my mate with me at the time. Uh, we got married. It was the first legal ordainment for the church. I call forth! I'm gonna mind you! About four months later, she split. <laughs> so, yeah, right now I'm single. I'm on the solo. But that's how it goes. I mean, she couldn't hang with it. She told me things like, you're changing and I don't like it. Well, you have all the tools at your disposal to change with me. And they do uh, describe that uh, a few months into the nightly uh, devotional practices that involve 
uh, demonic uh, invocations, uh, various uh, blasphemous conjurations, and a focus on uh, autoerotic uh, masturbatory offerings uh, that, you know, a few months uh, into the practice, uh, they associate it with intense uh, self-transformation, psychological changes, and uh, a, an experience of uh, constant transgression. I can't really speak to the extent that I've seen rituals go, but um, a high magic ritual is where the priest and the altar will copulate during ritual. We do have a live altar that is menstruating, and if you read our material, you understand why that is important. We're high school sweethearts, so we've been together a long time, and we've been married for 15 years, so. They would be classified as anti-cosmic, which means they oppose uh, the cosmic order uh, in all its forms. I proclaim death to all! Destroy every member of the enemy's herd! For there shall be no mercy behind the enemy's line! Dominocus! Groups that believe they have a special role to play in the end time might be conceived of as potentially dangerous because they might take action to spur that on. If it comes to bloodshed, it comes to bloodshed. I am prepared. I have done my time in the martial arts arena. I have worked in a maximum security prison. I say bring the violence. But in general, lots of groups think about the end time, are concerned with it. Pretty much all Christians do, but almost every other religion does as well. That's what we're concerned with, what happens after this life. Here's our church full of freaks. <laughs> Church full of juggalos and juggalettes, right? <laughs> All here. <laughs> so come at it. Yeah, we are sitting right now in the Civic Center's what we call our City Space Theater. And here in just a few days, we're going to be hosting an event that is being put on by a local group that they are calling a Black Mass in which they say that they are going to be invoking Satan and also exercising uh, the Holy Spirit from a, a certain individual. If he performs it by the book, it's a violation of Oklahoma law, health codes, um, and it's pretty disgusting. I think he's completely ridiculous. I think he's a clown, which is uh, kind of funny because he affiliates with these insane clown posse people. I think it's perfect. He's just like a quote gesture dancing around in front of the public. Adam Daniels is, in my opinion, a complete and utter joke that happened upon the insane clown posse who was also a joke but figured out how to make it work by taking the biggest rejects in society and telling them that they're special and that's basically who his membership is. I am a juggalo. I love ICP. My favorite is actually Boondocks. I love Boondocks. Got him in my sights, ain't him right between his eyes Feeling for the sight of blood is squirting when the bullets fly Decapitate a motherfucker with that heavy ammo Posted up on rooftops, dressed in black Batiste and camo There's a lot of the concepts surrounding uh, what the Wicked Clowns talk about that are in congruence with what we do as well, which is why you'll see it, the symbology of it throughout our things. There's a lot of cohesiveness between the two. Four years ago, or in 2010, we were approached, we had a different booking manager at the time, and we were approached by a gentleman by the name of James Hale, who at the time was affiliated with Mr. Daniels, and they wanted to put on a satanic exorcism right around Halloween time. As it says on our website, uh, Satan will be coming out of hell with his giblets attached. We booked the event. Uh, they sold about 50 tickets that year, but in the middle of them preparing for the event, Mr. Hale and Mr. Da Daniels had a parting of the ways. Uh, an interview came up that we were gonna do at his house. When I typed in the address, there was a sex offender registration that came up with it. I saw that and immediately started to pull it up because I was gonna call Adam and tell him some damn sex offender's using your address, let's go kill him. Uh, not literally. Co-founder James Hell says he discovered the now former dark overlord who went by an alias Adam Smith is really Adam Daniels, a registered sex offender. I did not rape anybody. I had consensual touching and making out with an inmate. I admitted to that. There's a subsect to the sexual battery law in Oklahoma. And the subsect is that if you're working for Department of Corrections, a person who is incarcerated by the Department of Corrections cannot legally give consent. 
it was a consent and relationship, but because she could not legally give consent, and I worked with IA on it, I got hit with sexual battery of a person over the age of 16. Even if his version of events is correct, it's still rape, and it's power rape, and he's immediately started looking for a position of power upon losing that position of power. We come back, and we come back again to this sign and this number. We've seen it on various occasions now. Yes, the number 471, in case everybody in our viewing audience is curious. This is 471 days that the Church of Ireland has gone without raping another person. We thought that every one of us should take an oath when we became a legal church not to rape anybody. <laughs> grand oath. Grand idea. No, I don't think that it hasn't changed my view on Adam at all. And he was up front with me when we first met. I have owned my guilt to this crime. I have paid my two years of probation without fail, without problem. When he said sex offender, I wasn't like, oh my God, you monster, you're terrible. No, I was, oh wow, why? Then he explained why, I'm like, well, that's kind of fucked up. I passed a lie detector test at the end of my probation, proving that I never forcibly done anything to anybody sexually. Proving that I've never had done anything with a minor. Proving that I'm not a threat to society. Everything that has happened in the past has helped make us more of who we are. Well, a sex, is there, is well, it, I guess it would depend on what you do. I mean, a sex offense is completely unforgivable. That, no, we don't deal with sex offenders at all once we realize that someone has done something like that. Or, you know, if someone isn't a sex offender and, you know, attempts to, you know, sexually assault somebody in the group or in public, what the fuck ever, I mean, no, we don't affiliate with you anymore, you're done. And so Mr. Hale put that event on, and then in subsequent years, we've had two events with Mr. Daniels. One of them sold all of 12 tickets, and the other one sold uh, zero. And so we were really surprised when he called us in May of this year and said he wanted to do another event. I believe that was very shortly after the Harvard Black Mass was canceled in April. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Let's go, Satan! Ave Maria, this is Friar John Paul here in Boston. We just finished the uh, Holy Hour in reparation for the Black Mass, which I just heard was canceled. Do you really want the stain of doing a satanic ritual on your fucking permanent record when you try to get a fucking job, young man? Every person in my group no longer gives a fuck. We no longer care you're taking like Malcolm X. It only takes one person who does not give a fuck to change the world. Well, now you got a group of them. If you saw the movie The Exorcist, do I look or different? Poltergeist, <laughs> you saw Hollywood's version of how man deals with evil spirits. This may sound pretty far out. But this is what we see in, in all these years of doing this kind of ministry. Exorcisms or casting out demons from people is very real and in fact is an everyday occurrence. We're going to show you actual exorcisms, not dramatized or reenacted, but as they were, videotaped at some recent meetings. My name is Everett Cox and I'm a mortgage banker, an ordinary businessman involved in this volunteer work of setting people free from the real enemy. The average Christian that comes for ministry, by the time the evening is over and the ministry is over, they will have had around three dozen spirits cast out. We open the door to those with fear, stress, anxiety. We open the door to uh, the demonic to affect our physical bodies whenever we are not walking in faith, but we're walking in fear. It'll usually, uh, they'll first feel it in their midsection, and then they feel it actually physically moving in their body upward toward the throat. Now as the spirit comes up into their throat, many people then yawn them out. We see that a lot. They may even burp it out. <laughs> Sometimes the burps are loud, it embarrasses them. <laughs>
many denominations really downplay the supernatural. And there seems to be a tremendous amount of interest in the supernatural with young people. And so they're reading Harry Potter, they're looking at all kinds of things on the web. I read the books when I was really little, but to be honest, I didn't stick with it. <laughs> and they see those movies and the book and books and stuff, and they get excited about those powers out there, those spiritual powers, and there is power there. And so they go online. You know how young kids go online now? Well, they get on there and they, they go to witchcraft sites and they start learning about witchcraft. Well, of course, here come the demons, you know. I, why'd you ask me that? That's not what led you to say no, Harry Potter was not what led me to Satanism. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> All I can say is I am totally against Satanism and witchcraft. And, and I'm going to shoot it down any way I can. That's where I'm coming from. Any of us that belong to Jesus have an obligation to counterattack because they're attacking us. There are a lot of people that don't like the sound of the shofar because it does something to them inside. Uh, this shofar was given to me by a friend of mine. It had been in his prayer room for 10 years. And so it was uh, saturated with uh, prayer. Prayer is thought, and thought has um, been, uh, you know, thought is energy. So I guess the power of prayer to an extent is um, is kind of a magical practice that could have effects. Are they going to be out there fucking walking around the stupid civic center jacking off and doing whatever the fuck they do? Sure, fine, great, whatever. But as soon as I get in there and I put down the first fucking blessing, I put down the corruption prayer, the shit clears out and we got freedom to do what we need to do. I personally haven't seen Christian prayer as a power ever working in my whole life. So I can honestly say that I'm not worried about it affecting any part. A group of Satanists says they'll mock Catholic rituals and declare Jesus worthless, and it's all happening inside a public building, the city's civic center. So is your, your see, old man over see, here see, Jesus, to fight? Jesus taught love. You know, I'm arguing all. with you. I'm a Satanist. I don't drink at all. Somebody I don't do any drugs. Why? Because I don't want you. I'm really scared, sir. That's what I'm afraid of right there. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I have a crunch now? Wow. Yeah, you want to get Watch in my this. face and want to get uh, angry with me? I'll put no. you to the ground, dude. I mean, I wasn't that scared. I was just afraid that we were getting into a, a really ultimate fight. So I just said, well, this is really not fun. We just came here to minister to Jesus Christ. So he died on the cross for his sins and he rose from the dead and came to heaven. And when we die, he's going to make a new earth and a, a new, new heavens. A new earth. heavens and new earth, because that's how he made it in the beginning, right? He made he, it in the beginning. He didn't make death and suffering in he it. Didn't he made it as a gift and... for us. He made it. It's him who's present in the Eucharist, and that's, that's the one who's being hurt by um, us, who, the people who are desecrating him. Black Mass inverts the action and meaning of our Holy Eucharist. In order to mock Christ's sacrifice and worship the devil through an orgiastic argi ritual of pain and perversion. Dr. Daniels believes in a spiritual war between the devil and his uh, various uh, demonic allies uh, against God, uh, the angels and uh, servitors of God, and uh, various uh, forces uh, supporting the cosmic order. So the Black Mass is actually uh, a form of spiritual assault directed against these enemy figures. There's this white dude in this gray shirt. He literally was over here. He took anointing oil, he made a cross, he splashed it, and he made a prayer, and I caught him in the middle of it, and he took off. That's how stupid this is getting, guys. That's how stupid Oklahoma is, in my opinion. They think that we're in here and we've got a, a goat that we just bought and we're cutting the goat's head off and somebody's drinking the blood and no, 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 no. <laughs> it was something that the Catholics accused Satanists of doing on a regular basis. It included things like, you know, kissing goats on the butt and 
uh, drinking urine, throwing urine all over the place, uh, feces. It's a uh, structured, you move here at this time, you move there at that time, and you have to say these specific words. Yeah, it's, it's like a real Catholic mass. I wonder if the Civic Center would permit a group to come in and rent the space to burn a Koran. I would hope they would not, um, but uh, this is equally abhorrent. Government cannot interfere in speech. And where the city has tried in the past to thwart an individual's freedom of speech on city property, we have been taken to court, we have been sued at taxpayers' expense, and we've lost those cases. And should the governor, or should the mayor, decide to stop us because of your protests and your petitions, not only am I going to sue the city and the state, I'm going to sue you too. Because it is my right as an American citizen to express my religion. If they start picking and choosing which religious groups they'll rent to based on whether they like things or dislike things about that group, it becomes an Establishment Clause violation. When you have a group that does this, not just because they want to do their own little worship, but they are provoking anger and hatred among the community, uh, the city can step in and say, you know what, that's not worship, that's not free speech, that's mockery, and you're inciting violence. When a culture considers something like a black mass as a legitimate form of speech, then we're, we're, in, we're in dark days, we're in dark times. It's not right to use the First Amendment as a billy club to beat Christians over the head. The Black Mass is a direct attack on our Lord Jesus Christ and the body, blood, soul, and divinity in the host. That's an attack on, on objective truth. When there's an attack on objective truth, there, there must be somebody there to defend it. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Oh my. They're going to desecrate Jesus Christ themselves. Everybody has a right to a freedom of religion. But in this case, we believe they don't, because what they're desecrating, if they actually still have a consecrated host, is the body of our Creator, and, and no one has the right to treat him in that, in that way. Even that act is not enough to tell somebody in a public facility that they don't have a right to speech. You have the right to say things about other people about their religions, even if it is offensive. The, the devil is alive. He's real. He 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 knows he knows the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and that's why they're doing this. Uh, they they did not go to other faith communities and and serve and steal their uh, communion service. They came to the one holy Catholic and apostolic because they know that it's truly the body, blood, and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. Okay, fuck you. You want to believe it's Jesus Christ? Great. You want to believe I have an actual consecrated host that some jack off said, hook, ah, crisp, blah, 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 and I threw some incense over it, and now it's Jesus? Fuck you, fine. I don't give a shit. Believe what you want. Because you already believe it anyway, so I'm just going to fuel that shit. A satanic black mass is scheduled for next month, and now the Catholic Archbishop of Oklahoma City is suing to stop it. It was kind of a slow beat at first, like it has been for the past few years. We got a little bit of local media, but nothing really big um, until Coakley popped off. And when Coakley popped off, then it was just raining in. The stolen consecrated host, which has been obtained illicitly from a Catholic church, is to be desecrated the vilest ways imaginable as an offering and sacrifice to Satan. Every few hours, somebody's calling. Can I get you to speak on my blog? Can I, can I get a few quotes from you? Daniel says the consecrated host he plans to use September 21st was blessed by a Catholic priest from Turkey who was beheaded by Muslims three weeks ago. He's kind of winning the war here already with all of this publicity, don't you think? That this is, you know, sometimes these things are better left uh, Ignored The magical cookie, it was stolen, then it wasn't stolen. Um, I think he probably, I know he shops over on Northwest Expressway at the Catholic Supply Store, and they sell little packages of the Eucharist Unblessed, and I'm pretty sure he bought a package. We bought a thousand communion wafers. I doubt very seriously he entered a Catholic church. I doubt even more seriously that he's got some overseas dark minister who's actually a Satanist pretending to be a Catholic that blessed it for him. No Catholic priest mail does shit. This whole idea, the, the childhood game of telephone, where you're sitting in a circle and one person starts off with a message and each person tells the next person next to them that same message and when it comes around the circle, it's a completely different message. 
And since everybody wanted to talk about ISIS beheading people, I just thought I'd add it in there. So did you start that rumor? With this? Of course I started that rumor. Rumors are power. The more you talk, the more you think, the more people talk, the more things get going, the more bullshit that applies to you, the more power base you have. And the more infamy we gain for whatever the fuck we can come up with, the better. Over 215,000 people have signed a petition in protest, but the event is still set to happen just a few hours from now. Shame on you! Shame on you! Out of your shanty! It's not working here, lady. I'm pretty standing here. It's not working. You are a sinner. You need a savior. We're against the Satanists, but we're against anyone that doesn't believe only in the Word of God. So why do we have jets? Why do we have? Why do we have everything science. we need? Science. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, science put all that material on the ground. These people are freaking out. It feels like there should be brawl burnings and people talking about civil rights and. Uh, it's just interesting. We have the internet in our pockets, but we can't, like, love the person standing next to us and respect them. Santa is coming. And I can give you a date. Oh, God's story outside of God. He's himself, so he made us to feel better. We have to love them as Christ loves us. we got to love those inside that say they hate us. We will love them in return. Uh, but do you think the Civic Center should allow them to be inside doing this? No, I don't think they should. Because I think that I think the laws of the nation ought to reflect the laws of God. It's, it's shit like this that's going to make the thunder up and move on. Well, I get out of here. Well, I mean, you know, you're you're believing in the right God right now, man. You can get up there and you're like, shit, it was all all the What about million. Allah? There's a billion, a billion Muslims believing in Allah. I'll tell you Allah. what. I'm most definitely not wrong because man is like right now like the person, and I'm trained to do so. Well, but the God in me says love you. You want to do it? That's the man. Why? I don't, don't want to hurt you, though. I don't want to hurt you. Why? Why? Because, he any, because I, I questioned your faith. Yeah. He's peacefully asking one thing. Well, that's, that's pretty awful to question someone's faith. There has to be a fucking villain. If you want change to occur, there has to be a bad guy. There's got to be the fucker who's saying, fuck you, we're not doing this anymore. The Bible's totally logical. If the Bible's not logical, then we're wasting our time reading this. The Bible's totally logical. The Bible, the Bible is... It's all truth, all the Bible is fire. I mean, some of it actually, most of the Old Testament, some of it has no. It's heard behind me! Hey, now, now, I want you to picture this, really picture this, because a lot of people like to read this Bible as ink on a page. This ain't just ink on a page, this is the living world. That's what she happens. Would you say this is uh, evil and it's one of its purest forms? Uh, it is indeed. They have turned this black mass into a fucking carnival of God versus the devil. What happens when they can't shut us down? What happens when they can't shut me down? What happens when, oh shit, the black mass happened, the devil won? We do not have a consecrated house. I'm sure everybody is aware it's too long. <laughs> but we do have what is traditionally called for with coarse black bread. This will be supplicated as the host. The reason the coarse black bread is so that when we get done stomping on it, it looks like a piece of shit. That is our opinion of Christ. It is a piece of shit. I believe in the, the, the power of the sacramentals, the rosary. I, I wear a scapular. I have this uh, medal with St. Benedict's blessed on it. I have holy water in my house. I try to attend daily mass. Uh, I went to confession yesterday, so yes, the, the spiritual warfare is alive. Uh, we are engaged in a war. Uh, it's, it's, and it's going to go on it, it, until, until the end. I do believe um, in spiritual warfare. I believe there's a way of directly and indirectly attacking someone and someone's spiritualness. Dead skin, uh, nails, hair, particularly like menstrual fluid. These things are really powerful to demons. And you can use these to fuel a ritual or fuel an attack against someone. The power behind all the dead blood that comes out of a menstruating woman can call all of the demons around this female. And it gives the demons enough power to corrupt an entire village. We acknowledge and confess our past error, renouncing all past allegiances. We proclaim that Satan, Lucifer, rules the earth. I thought I thought it was always like just like rumors and legends. I didn't know it actually it was a legit. Or... There's a surprising amount of organization 
from what I gathered, it was just as boring as a Catholic mass. They was there Latin involved? They mocked the Eucharist and stomped a piece of black bread, and made it look like a pile of shit. They replaced piss with vinegar and blessed the four directions. Yeah, with, a, uh, with a dildo. A big floppy dildo. It's I need to buy that one. Actually, what's, but yeah, with what's, what's a big phallic symbol. Slim. And then after that, um, we're going to be doing an exorcism on me. Well, <laughs> that's kind of a joke because in the first place, anybody that was participating in that, they're obviously not a Christian and they're not going to have the Holy Spirit. There's no Holy Spirit to cast out. How many goddamn serial killers, how many goddamn murderers in the name of God have done sick shit? So you want to tell me that if a fucking demon, which is supposed to be a fallen angel, can possess a person, that a fucking angel can't do the same thing? During the ritual, I know I felt, because I know I started with my hands together like this, and during it, I literally felt my hands pulled apart, and then it's almost like I could feel something here grab and kind of pull at my midsection. I saw eyes mostly looking back at me, many of them. Um, that's the best way to describe that, but a lot of what I saw is really hard to put into words. Come on, Jehovah's Slave Master. The power of Ahmed compels you. Come on, Jesus Christ, I'm the king who eats the brains of the living. So you're saying that you don't want demons to enter in people as, of, of your church. Of my people, no. Okay. So if now, controlling other people, though. On a average Joe Blow, that's a tool. That's no different than, say, my athame. If you're not part of us, you're not one of us, you're no different than anything else. You're a tool to be used. So, how was it? You were actually in there. This guy was actually in there. Uh, <laughs> very dark. Very dark? <laughs> how was yeah. the, the exposure? Was not great. Did you get any demons on camera? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Most Satanists, if they're completely honest with you, will tell you that they've never visually seen a demon. Um, I've never visually seen a demon. Demons are around us all the time. As he said, angels are around us all the time. But when they're shown to you, when you can feel them come up and shake your hand, a whole different experience. They were a lot more aggressive this time. I had forced my mouth open. I felt as if I had a bar or an arm in my mouth. Well, they are messing with things that are real and powerful. All authority of Satan is broken over Carl. They give Jesus you praise. No, I've never seen an angel. I've never seen a demon. I've seen many demon manifestations. I've never seen one. There are people that see them that are sensitive to the spirit world, I don't seem to have any particular sensitivities. I'm just a real average Christian doing normal Christianity. Audio and visual hallucinations when viewed on a CAT scan come in through the visual cortex and the audio cortex. They're indistinguishable from actual sounds and sights being seen. So I have no way of saying that they don't exist and all the evidence that says that they might. Demons are always abounding around us. When you evocate them and you give them energy, you also have to give them direction. So if I masturbate and I give them my lust, that gives them energy to fuel them to do something. Then I project with my mind's eye and I tell them through communicating that way through, taking them through the process of what I want done, they go and they help accomplish that spiritually. And, and so when the demon is up and I can interrogate it, I'll say, do you see God's warring angels around us here? And it'll take the person's head sometimes like this in their eyes and it'll go around like that. Yes. Are their swords drawn? Yes. <laughs> that intimidates them big time. Possessing people necessarily? Um, <laughs> I guess it would uh, depend upon the situation. <laughs> um, but for the sake of the documentary, I'll say no. There's people that don't believe in what we're doing. I, people say, well, I don't believe in casting out demons. My answer would be, well, do you want to leave the demons in them? Because <laughs> they're, they're going to have them. That's what drives this on, you know? 
we'd have quit long ago if we didn't see this work. Why else would we do this? <laughs> you know, it works. And it would work with all Christians if they would do it. The real secret is that there are satanic rituals going on in this city all the time. And it's not out here in the open. It's the deep dark stuff. If you're seeing this, this is the shark fin. You know, this is the shark fin here. There's a whole beast underneath. There's a real operative evil. There are many witch codes here in Oklahoma City. There are uh, a lot of, um, of Satanists that are in Oklahoma City. It's not a very large number. It's not a very large number at all. I know I've been contacted by over 2,000 people who claim to be Satanists in the Oklahoma area. It's just so religious here. I mean, you see a church on every block. I mean, of course you're going to get uh, static. A church next door to a church, and over here there's a church, and if you go around the corner, there'll be another church. And it's just, <laughs> it's just offensive and shoved down everyone's throats. I would like to see, like, uh, you know, less churches, more Habana inns, more bars, more strip clubs, and more liquor stores. I wish we were like Rosemary's Baby, where every you, everywhere you turn, there's another Satanist. Everywhere you turn, there's another one, and they're unified in a goal. No, if anything, they're fractured and broken. They're not a people's, but they need to be. And there's a reason why um, the Satanists have come to Oklahoma to take ground. Because it's the most Catholic area in the United States that I could possibly imagine to disrupt and destroy. That's what they want, but that's the main, we live here. <laughs> but Anton LaVey specifically said, you only do the black mass in response to an oppressive regime and Catholicism is no longer an oppressive regime in the United States. Consumerism is oppressive. I Celebrity worship is oppressive. All kinds of things are oppressive, but I don't understand why they chose Catholicism here. I figured I might sneak down here myself with a little uh, sage and, and maybe smudge the room a little bit and see. You never know. Everyone's got their own beliefs and their own things that they are going to make them feel better about the world and themselves as, as a whole. So. Uh, yeah, if someone wants to come down here and and bless the space in, in some capacity, we would certainly welcome that if they wish to rent the space to do so. It is going to have an effect. Now, how much of an effect uh, really depends on the church. I know witchcraft works. Yeah, I think witchcraft works. And so uh, if they do it, I believe that, that they'll release demons in the atmosphere. We'll wake up the next day and it'll be just as if it never happened except for a few more people mouthing off about it. It's real. It's, it's real spiritually of the dark side. And I can tell you every one of them involved in that is demonized. They've got demons in them, every bit of three dozen and probably more. We don't believe in it, but if we see cool demons, then well, I guess we should believe, right? Yeah, if we see something actually happen, I guess we'll Evidence is probably evidence. start coming more often or start praying for once. <laughs> I see no reason to uh, regard his uh, devil uh, worship as insincere in any way. I guess it's the same kind of, you know, thing as like gravity. You know, you uh, it exists around you, it affects you. But I mean, if you don't believe in it, it's still there. <laughs> you know, you just because you don't believe in it, you're not going to float off into space. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's kind of what magic is to me, I guess. It's everywhere. I would like to believe that there's even things like magic and demons and, and what, whatever else is out there. I'd like to believe that, but I've never seen it. And if I do, then yeah, I'd say I believe in it. But as of right now, I'm, you know, still waiting, I guess. Well, we'll see what happens to the cosmos.